Hey guys, I'm back with another weathering tutorial here. The last one that I did was a Sioux Line boxcar and we went really heavy weathering with that. Uh, but now we have a little newer era um, BNSF covered hopper here. And we're going to do some weathering to it, but it's going to be a lot lighter. So I'm going off this picture here. And if you look, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can see the little dirt on the bottom here and then you can also see the white streaks coming down from the top there and then the dirty trucks that's kind of what we're going for. for so for those white streaks I'm just going to use powder and then I'll use a little bit um, I'm actually only going to use powders on this I believe except for the wheels and the trucks I'm going to use a little bit of paint but I'm mostly just going to use powders so for the paint that I'll use for the wheels I'm going to use this melted chocolate and black paints and they have to be acrylic or sorry acrylic not acrylic acrylic paints I saw a quick drawing and that's what made me read that they need to be acrylic paints and you can get these at Walmart for like 59 cents or something I think I got them for and then I'm going to use also burnt umber for the rusty wheels and then I think these will be the only two powders that I use. I might use some rust, but uh, I, I might not have to. But I'm going to use this dark earth and chalky white powders from Monroe Models. I'd very much recommend these. And then I'm also going to be using this tester's dull coat, which is going to be my first kind of primer on it. So, I'm going to just spray this on off camera, just go up high above it, probably about a foot away, and just lightly spray over it, over and back, maybe over and back twice, and just get a nice light coat on it, so that we have a good, nice primed spot, or a primed uh, rail car here to start adding powders to. Alright, now I've let it sit for a little bit with that dull coat on it. And I'm going to take my brush here and what I'm going to do is my paint's been sitting out for a little bit but I think I'll be able to get it is I'm going to take just a little bit of this black paint oh boy try and stir it up a little bit here a little bit of that brown paint. What I'm trying to do is get that nice black brown mixture there. A little bit more brown. Alright now I'm going to take that and I'm going to take the trucks here and I'm going to spread it onto these trucks being very careful to not break off that ladder there which I have done before which I I don't find it to be a huge deal but some modelers do they like having those little parts on there so I'm gonna try my best to not to not hit that off Now it looks shiny right now, but once that dries, it's going to look real nice. Then we'll go over to the other one and do the same exact thing. And you can really stroke the stroke the brush any which way here because the trucks are always moving along the ground so it could be up and down, there could be side to side, whatever. 
Move over to the other side. I'm going to move you guys up a little bit. I kind of cracked these a little bit. It's okay. I'll stay put. That probably makes a lot of you guys cringe and it kind of makes me do it also, but that's kind of a risk that you take working with these. It's got to be really careful. Sometimes my thumb ends up where I don't want it to, but that's it's okay. We're all good. Pushed it back into place. No worries. I got a little bit on the step there, but that's okay. Alright, so now the trucks are done. We're going to roll into the wheels here. Now for the wheels, I'm taking this smaller brush that I have, and I'm dipping it into the burnt umber. So now we're using that burnt umber. For the rusty wheels. I'm going to bring you back in close here and let you watch how I do this. It's going to be a little bit more challenging here, but we're going to try our best. I gotta move you down a little bit. See how I'm just putting the brush in there and rotating the wheel and stroking the brush in a little bit. Just trying to get a nice even coat of burnt umber in there. Nice even coat. Just like that. You can even take some you can even take some burnt um, umber and hit hit the springs and stuff. whole lot but you definitely want to try and cover the entire wheel now I didn't show this in my last video but I, I, I wrote it in but what you want to do is to get all this excess paint off here is take the dull end of your exacto knife and you want to just scrape it off because that's going to hit you know the frogs of the of the switches or anything like that and those will scrape against those which bump off the rust and the and the grime and stuff and so those will generally stay Pretty shiny. Alright, I'm just going to show that the, those wheels there. And then also, actually, I'll show you this too. You're going to do the insides of the other wheels. Just to really get that added realism. Is You want to get the insides of the wheels too. I probably won't put any powder on them, but I'll, I'll paint them. Get a little bit more paint here. Um, but once I'm done getting these insides of this wheel done, I'm going to do 
do all the rest of the wheels off camera and then we'll move on from there my last tutorial was really long and that's because that was a much more heavy weathered car but this one's going to be lighter weathering obviously so we'll do the rest off camera alright that's good enough but I'll keep I'll keep going on that and then um, I'll show you right after alright I've allowed the wheels to dry a little bit and now we're gonna take our dark earth powder here and we're gonna put it within the wheels and uh, a little bit on the trucks and stuff so you're gonna see that and then we'll put a little bit of kick up just a little bit of kick up on on it so what I do when I say kick up I mean I get so lost in my words sometimes when I say kick up I mean when dirt is going along the wheels and sometimes it kicks up on the side of the car here that's what I mean by kick up but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush and this is a dry brush that I didn't use to paint or anything dry brush you need a dry brush, brush with these powders I'm going to take my dry brush dab it in there just a little bit get a little bit off and then you're going to have excess that you want to dab back into the into the lid here so now I'm going to zoom you in here and I'm going to show you exactly what I do with these wheels and you're, you're really going to see here if you haven't before how well this turns out just kind of spread it in there pretty evenly see that now you're really getting that good that good weathered wheel look now remember like I said before we're going to use that, the dull end of that exacto knife to clean off the sides and then you also want to take a q-tip and clean the bottoms of the wheels now you can also take a little bit of this powder and just put it on that other stuff there And there we go, there's a wheel set. Now you can take this powder and just kind of brush your excess onto the side of the car there. Just to dirty it up a little bit and onto your stairs here. Now I'll show you right now what I'm going to do with that X-Acto knife. So I take my X-Acto knife, take the dull end, the back end, not the sharp end. I'm going to put it right on there and just hold it there as I rotate the wheel. And you'll see how that comes out with a nice shiny finish. And that's how they're going to look out there on the real, on the real railroad. Do it again on this side. You can see how that turned out. Looks really good. That's what a finished truck's gonna look like. I'm gonna finish the rest of my trucks off camera and then we'll uh, proceed from there. Alright, I'm done with that. Now, looking at my picture here, we're gonna start working on these, um, the parts where the, the grain comes out or whatever is in the hopper comes out. We're gonna start working on those. And obviously, well, not obviously, but I mean, we're just gonna use this, keep using this dark earth all we need to do this light weathering and so what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to apply it to these spots right here
Looks good to me. Flip her around and do it again on the other side. Now I'm getting a little bit of dirt from my gloves on the actual model itself, which isn't making me really happy. But it's not a big deal because if it's dirty in different places, it's dirty in different places. Which is okay. That's the nice thing about weathering is if you kind of make a mistake, not a huge deal because because it's just dirt. Dirt gets everywhere. Getting it all in these spots on the ends, on the front and back of these. That's about all we need for that. See how that turned out? Just like that. Now what I want to do is I want to take a little bit and make that a little bit darker because that's going to be a high traffic area where guys are going to be walking and and grain's going to be coming down and stuff so I want to darken this area up a, a little bit We're not going to do any rust on this one because we're just going to pretend that it's, it hasn't been out long enough to, to really start rusting over. I love this dark earth though. You can literally use this anywhere on the model. Sorry, I'm going kind of fast here and I'm not keeping up with my with where my brush is on the camera. But now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to make these white covers here, these lids, just a little bit darker. Just by running that dirt over them again. Because white on a railroad doesn't stay white very long. I put a little bit too much on the end one. So I'm going to grab a Q-tip and try and correct that as best as I can. Pretty good. Pretty good, I think. Now I'm just gonna do the end of the car just a little bit, just a little bit, just cause they're gonna have a little bit of kick up here. Try and get back. Oh, it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, that's not too easy, but it's really not a huge deal. As long as you get a little bit in there in the end. I'm not too worried about how that looks. Looks fine. All right. Now I think we're done with our, with our dark earth here. And I'm gonna bring out a little bit of white here. 
that white chalk. Now remember, you want to use a new brush that hasn't been used for paint. But now I want to use a thin brush. So I'm going to use my nice little thin brush here. I'm going to cover back up my dark earth, make sure I try and retain as much of that powder as I can. I'm also going to switch out this sheet of paper because I don't want to be putting my model into that grime that I already have there. Alright, I switched out the piece of paper that I had and I got over, I brought over my chalky white. Now again I'm using this little tiny brush because I'm going to try and simulate those little white lines that are coming down on the creases. Now those creases, you can see them, are right here. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> I'm really trying to learn this as I go. I think this brush might be too thin to pick up enough powder. Oh, it's working. You can see it right there, it's working. Now what I'm doing is I'm wiping that on there pretty good and then I'm going to clean the rest off with a Q-tip. Clean all that excess off with a Q-tip. Alright, now I'm going to take my Q-tip here like I said. Just clean off. I'm actually gonna blow it off first. <laughs> Any excess that I had on there, I blew it off. And now clean the excess off around that with a Q-tip as good as I can. See how that's turning out? Just like that. Now they originate up from these spots. Oh no, they don't originate, but they are they have spots up here under these too. So we're gonna do the same thing. Come back, blow it off. Do any little fine touches that you feel like you need to do with the with the uh, Q-tip here. And yeah. Now I'm going to do it to the other side off camera and then uh, after that we'll pretty much be wrapping up the video. So this is pretty much our finished product here. I've just kind of been wiping it down trying to make those lines pretty straight but I'm happy with how it came out. Can't really complain too much. It's the first time I ever tried this technique. So I'm happy with how it turned out. Nice dirty top and then come into the side with our white streaks coming down and then all the way at the bottom we have our our uh, our dirty bottom there not bad not bad at all now I'm gonna put my dull coat on there my testers dull coat here and that's how I'll finish it up Alright, that leaves me 
that leads me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was simple enough for you guys to do too. I know you really can't do it without this powder, but you can also use pastels. Um, I don't really know how you can do light weathering with paints because I haven't tested it out my, myself. But I really recommend if you want to get into good detailed weathering, get this Monroe Models powder and it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole lot easier for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, like I said before, and uh, comment any questions or, or any suggestions you may have for me at the bottom. All right, guys, you guys have a good day.